One of the things I love about YouTube is that there's always someone digging up hidden gems. You know, good games that no one's ever heard of before. I could list all the amazing channels that I watch, but, well, they've got enough views. Although, special shout out to Metal Jesus Rocks and Reggie for this one. The weird thing about Hidden Gems is that growing up playing and obsessively reading about every single game imaginable in EGM, GamePro, PSM, long before the internet, I'm constantly surprised how many snuck by me. My favorite games to collect, they're not the most expensive ones. They're the ones that no one's ever heard of. So that's my story with Wardner on the Sega Genesis. I, I don't have a history with it. I never read about it or even heard about it. And even though it was an arcade game too, this one managed to get past me altogether. So first a word of warning about Wardner. Don't trust your first impressions about this one. And another word of warning about Wardner? Don't trust your second impressions either. Because yesterday, I booted it up for the very first time, and immediately, I liked Wardner. The big-eyed characters were a cross between Hudson's Adventure Island and, well, Eric Cartman from South Park. Uh, I'm not kidding. He, he's a weird-looking dude. I mean, how did he even get a girlfriend? W what am I doing wrong? If I had a girlfriend and she got kidnapped by a demon and I had to traverse enemy-infested lands to save her, would I? Well, well no, probably not. No, definitely not. This kid's got balls. But graphically, he animates well enough, and there's just enough parallax scrolling and variety in the background to give the graphics here a, a passable mark. They're not amazing, but I'm also not complaining about the way it looks. It actually reminds me a bit of Ghouls and Ghosts. A little. Initially, everything here seems pretty easy. Our boy Dover, yeah, that, that's Cartman's name, controls pretty well, and even though his standard attack fires with this strange arc, all of the enemies die with just one hit. So, pretty easy, right? But only moments later, I realized just how wrong I was. This game's frickin' impossible! Usually when I review a game, I've at least played it before, if not beaten it multiple times. But Wardner is brand new to me. And I'll tell you, this game requires some patience and memorization. So much so, that I probably spent six hours with it before I really felt like I knew what I was doing. And I, and I know that sounds dumb for a game that only takes about 60 minutes to beat. But here's the reason, and it's something you wouldn't expect from a game in this genre. The time limit here is effing brutal. Like, swear at your screen, rage quit, throw your controller, break your cart, and punch the wall brutal. Each level starts with a three minute time limit, which isn't nearly enough. As early as stage two, you're faced with multiple paths, hidden items, dead ends, booby traps, so not only do you need to know where you're going, you seriously need to move, and more often, you won't be fast enough. When time's up, you're, you're just dead. I died countless times during flawless boss fights, just mere seconds away from the level's end. It was infuriating, but again, this isn't your typical platformer. You need to learn how to play it, because Wardner forces you to. Exploring should only be done as scouting missions before you decide to play for real. Learning where items are around the level is equally as important as your speed. There are hourglasses that'll add time to your game clock, but only if you're not carrying one already. Worse, our boy Dover is cursed with one-hit deaths, but you can find a cape adding one hit, which is a literal lifesaver. There are areas where taking a hit seems mandatory, and there are at least one or two of these where I've yet to find another way to get around them. So, it's not easy, but there are item shops to help you out, and anytime you can, make sure you buy the cape for the extra hit and the needle and thread, which uh, allows you to repair your cape, uh, ostensibly giving you yet another hit, but also buy the sun power as early as possible. It's absolutely essential for later levels, and it should be noted 
that you never need to buy either of the other two power-ups. They're a waste of money and not nearly powerful enough to finish the game with. Honestly, I hated so many things about my time with Wardner. The time limits are total garbage, and you have to do these stupid little duck jumps to reach certain areas. You'll, you'll constantly hit your head, uh, jumping from ropes, causing you to fall straight down and into lava pits. Uh, it boils down to some really cheap game design that results in a ton of frustration. But now that I've spent so much time with Wardner, uh, I'm actually pretty good at it. So despite all of its problems, I really like this one. I find myself thinking about it when I'm not playing it. So thanks, YouTube, for exposing me to this pain in the ass of a hidden gem.